Okay, today is November 30th, 2011. We're on chapter 6 review. We're going to work on page 311, number 3. It's a word problem that says the length of a rectangle is 16 centimeters greater than its width. The area is 35 centimeters squared. Determine the sides of the rectangle. So we have a rectangle. Looks like this. The width is unknown, and the length is 16 centimeters larger than the width. So that means we're going to have the width plus 16 as our length. Oh, is it in meters? Good. We'll get to that. So it is 16 centimeters larger. The area of the rectangle is actually in meters. The area is 35 meters squared, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to change our measurements to meters. So what would 16 centimeters be in meters? 0 0.16. So our new length is x plus 0 0.16. That's our length. Our width would still stay as x. It's just now being measured in meters rather than centimeters. Now we know the area of an object, A is equal to the width or the length times the width, and we have our values for length and width. Also our area too, good. Our area is 35, so we're going to replace our A with 35, is equal to the length which is x plus 0 0.16 times the width, which is x. We're going to distribute that x so that we get x times x is x squared plus 0 0.16x. And finally, we need to actually find out the values of our x. So I'm going to put this into standard form, if you guys recall. Our standard form over here. So to get it into standard form, I want to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to move the 35 to the other side of the equation. Now 35 will become negative when that happens. And we will get 0 is equal to x squared plus 0.16x minus 35. And now we're in our standard form of the question. So we are in our standard form right now, and I need to solve for this. Now I have a decimal, a whole number. Could run into some troubles factoring. We're going to go ahead and use our quadratic formula here. Okay. So we're going to be putting our quadratic formula up here. And we're going to take our standard form from before, because if you recall, we need to use standard form. 0 is equal to x squared plus 0.16x minus 35. Now from our standard form, we got to make sure we know our A values, our B values, and our C values. So our A value is what? 1. Our B value is 0 0.16, and our C value is negative 35. Good. We're going to put this right into our quadratic formula, which is x is equal to negative b. b is 0 0.16 plus or minus the square root of b squared. We have now b squared, which is 0 0.16 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 35. 2 times a, which is 1. We'll get negative 0 0.16 plus or minus the 
square root of 0.16 squared, which is 0 0.0256. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 35 will be positive 140 divided by 2. Negative 0 0.16 plus or minus the square root of 140.0256. Divided by 2. Negative 0 0.16 plus or minus square root of 140.0256. 11.833. So we get plus or minus 11.833 divided by 2. Now, if you guys remember, we're going to need to split this because of our positive and negative sign. Technically, the square root of 140.0256 is plus 11.833 and minus 11.833. So we get negative 0 0.16 plus 11.833 divided by 2, and negative 0 0.16 minus 11.833 divided by 2. When we go to equate these, uh, 0.16 negative plus 11.833 divided by 2, 5.83 and our other option is negative 0.16 minus 11.833 divided by 2 negative 5.83 we can definitely round that to six. So negative six. So when we go back to our question from before, and I am going to so what we decided or what we came up with was our negative answer clearly wasn't right. So we took our positive number, 5.83, as our width. And remember, we're adding it to the green, so 5.83 plus 0 0.16, which gave us a length of 5.99, I believe. When we multiply those two together, a width and a length, 5.99 times 5.83 equals what would be rounded to 35 meters squared. Because we rounded a little early, we didn't get 35 right on the dot, but those are both acceptable answers. Okay, question number eight from page 311. They give us a cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is 600 milliliters squared. The height of the cylinder is 12 centimeters. They want us to find the radius. Now, luckily, they give us the conversion that milliliters or one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. Therefore, the volume is 600 centimeters cubed. We know that because we're now in the same unit, centimeters and centimeters. They want us to find the volume, or sorry, the radius, which means I need to know my volume formula. The volume formula is essentially the area of this circle multiplied by the height. So area of a circle, if anyone remembers, area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And we know that the volume is going to be equal to the area of the circle multiplied by the height. Our height is 12. We figured that out. So I'm going to replace the V in the question with our 600 centimeters cubed. So we have 600 is equal to area of a circle is pi r squared. So we get pi 
r squared, and our height is 12. Whoops. Okay. So now that we have that going, I'm going to multiply across here. Or actually, sorry, instead of doing that, what we're trying to find here is our radius. That's our goal. So I want to get the radius by itself. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this 12 to the other side of the equation. And in order to do that, what do I have to do? Divide both sides of the equation by 12. Now on the right side, the two 12s will cancel each other. We'll be left with pi r squared. 600 divided by 12, 50, all right. It's 50. Now, I still got to isolate r. This symbol for pi is actually a number. And it says pi times r squared, so I'm going to move pi to the other side. In order to move pi to the other side, it's the same method that I used to 12. I have to divide both sides by pi. So the pi's on the right side will cancel out. We're going to get r squared is equal to 50 divided by pi, 15 point, oh, sorry, no way, 15.915. We gotta stay accurate. We still have to square root this, so I'm gonna keep a couple decimal places in there. Finally, to get the r by itself, I need to square root in order to cancel out that power of two. The square root and the power of two will cancel each other out. So we're left with r is equal to the square root. I'm gonna keep that number in there because it will give me the most accurate answer. <laughs> 3.98. is equal to the radius, or r is approximately 4 centimeters. Okay? So our r here is 4 centimeters. Number 6. It says that the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle is one centimeter more than triple that of the shorter leg so that means we're gonna call this the shorter leg okay call this my s my longer leg or my hypotenuse my shorter leg will just be value of x that's the distance of it hypotenuse is one more than triple that of the shorter leg so three times x plus one the longer leg is one less than triple that of the shorter leg. You know what, we'll set this up the same way. Now the question is asking us to find the lengths of the three sides of the triangle. So in order to find the lengths of the three sides of this triangle, we're going to put this into Pythagorean's theorem. If you guys remember Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared <coughs> is equal to c squared. Our c has to be the hypotenuse, which means this will be our c. The a and b are not as important. So we're going to call this our a and this our b. We're going to end up with x squared. plus 3x minus 1 squared is equal to 3x plus 1 squared. Okay. Now we can expand all that. We'll get x squared plus, when I expand this, I'm going to get 3, sorry, 9x squared, 9x squared, uh, minus 3x, minus 3x plus 1. And the other side, we'll get 9x squared 
plus 3x plus 3x plus 1. We're going to simplify our brackets. We'll get x squared plus 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 is equal to 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. I still want to simplify. I'm going to drop the brackets on the left side. So x squared plus 9x squared is going to give me 10x squared minus 6x plus 1 is equal to 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. So now that we have that, I'm actually going to move my left, my right side of the equation over. So we have our numbers here. We're going to simplify by moving everything from the right to the left side. So they will all become negative when they move over. So we are going to get 10x squared minus 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 because we moved everything from the right side. When we simplify our terms, we'll get 10x squared. I lied. We'll get 1x squared minus 12x. The ones cancel out equals 0. Okay? Now, this is actually a little different from how we're used to factoring. I could put this in the quadratic formula and you see as 0 and such. Or what I can do here is I can factor. I'm going to take my greatest common factor here, which is x, and I'm going to factor it out. So we'll get x is equal to x minus 12. Now what I have are two values that multiply by each other are going to equal to 0. So I can split the equation from here. x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 12. Well, x 0 is equal to x minus 12. When we move 12 over, we get x is equal to 12. It's pretty unlikely when we go back up to the top that our triangle has a side that is 0. Those were our two options, 0 and 12. Okay, We're going to try 12. So if the shorter side is 12, that means the hypotenuse of the triangle would be 3 times 12 plus 1, which is 36, 37. And on the other side, our length would be 3 times 12 minus 1, which would be 35. So what they're saying here is the size of the triangle is 12, 37, and 35. Put it into Pythagorean's theorem and see if it works.